G'day guys, this is Jason Bond from the Odd Couple Statue Group Reviews doing episode two of What A Character brought to you by the Collectiverse and today we're doing Batman, The Dark Knight of Gotham. <laughs> It goes by many names, the Cape Crusader, world's greatest detective, the Batman. Um, look, his, his origins are pretty deep and disturbing, but we're going to start with where his first run was. So his first run was in 1939. It was created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger um, for Detective Comics. Now, the origin story was uh, pretty dark, and didn't, they didn't go into it until about like the sixth or seventh episode. Um, before that, like all you really saw of the Batman was this is a Batman that killed his enemies, um, throwing them in vats of acid and lots of other different things, um, used guns, you know, so there was two big major rules where he doesn't kill his enemies and there was no Robin either. So about episode six or seven, they went into the episode, uh, went into his origin story and we know what most Batman fans know it well, basically re after uh, going to the movies with his um, family, leaving the theatre, they've taken a shortcut through an alleyway and they get mugged and his parents get shot, leaving him an orphan child, the orphan Bruce Wayne. That um, drives him to become what we know as the Batman, that no other child should experience what he went through. That, that's the driving force behind Batman and they keep that driving force all the way up through to the current day. Now, there was some conjecture amongst the, the publishers of the comic. They were like, wow, this character's extremely, a lot darker than anything that they were doing at the time. So they're like, wow, this is very dark and that I think we're gonna scare off the young male readers and stuff like that. So to sweeten it up, they brought in, he, he adopted a ward, Dick Grayson. And Dick Grayson ends up becoming Robin, the boy wonder. So he's got a teammate with him that's a young kid, so young kids could relate to the character and think, oh, fantastic, you know, I could be Robin with Batman, you know? So, yeah, there was all that going on. Now, fast forward a number of years, because these stories were a bit disjointed and a bit all over the place, and in fact, in the 1950s, um, Detective Comics was actually looking at, which ended up becoming DC Comics, was trying to kill off the character. Now, the creator, Bob Kane, um, decided let's try and do a massive revamp and that and got some current writers and that together to revamp the character and make him a little bit more similar to the Batman that we have today to concentrate more on his detective skills and that rather than his brute force and scare tactics and stuff like that. So then we fast forward and we get the Adam West Batman. Most of us older blokes, we grew up on this TV show with the bam, pow, wham, and the, and the crazy dancing, you know? Absolutely fantastic stuff. Um, even when you look back at it now, look, it's campy as hell. It's um, great fun, you know? But then look, in saying that, they do show some classic characters. Um, I mean, the guy that played the Joker, the guy that played um, the Penguin, you know, the guy, that, the guy that played the Penguin was actually Mickey from Rocky, so there you go. <laughs> that gives you an idea of some of the characters that they had in there. Um, now, also in saying that, when that show came to an end, it sort of did destroy the character for a little while. You know, like, um, the comic book sales started to pick up a little bit, but the stories were more geared towards this style of Batman, or the Adam West style. And as I said, um, it wasn't until we came to 1986, really, with Frank Miller and the Dark Knight Returns series, um, that really showed DC that a dark and gritty Batman was the way to go. So, when you had the... Um, the post-crisis universe won't go into crisis and stuff like that. That's for, that's for another day. But when you get into the post-crisis universe, this is sort of the Batman that we get, which is more Batman modern, okay? So this is the Batman that you see through the 80s and early 90s. Now, the Frank Miller Dark Knight Returns story won't go too much into it rather than say it's a story of a 55-year-old Batman that's been retired for a while and he's watching his city descend into chaos by under rule again. So he basically slips the cow and that back on after there's been a presidential order banning superheroes. The only one in operation is Superman under presidential decree. <coughs> so Batman starts up again and Superman gets sent to take him out in the, in the number two. And now, veering away from that, we're going to go back to the mainstream comics. So the next big thing that happened was 1988's Death in the Family. Now this was a big, big event. There'd been a lot of where characters died, but then they come back, you know, through mystical events and stuff like that. This was the first one where they said, no, no, this character's dead, and then he ain't coming back. And that's Jason Todd, Robin number two. By this time, Dick Grayson had shed the um, 
the Robin persona and become Nightwing with the Teen Titans. So Jason Todd stepped in, um, became the second Robin, and he wasn't a very liked Robin, to be honest. Um, a lot of people didn't like his cockiness and his arrogance, like he argued with Batman all the time and stuff like that, whereas Dick Grayson didn't really argue with Batman until near the end when he started to mature and looking at himself in that costume like we all know how Robin looks, look at him and go, nah, <laughs> you know, so basically that's what happened there. Um, Jason Todd was killed by, um, in the storyline Death in the Family by the Joker with a crowbar. So, and it also brought the Joker into a new type of era where he was getting more dark and gritty. Now, you've also got the killing joke where another person that was close to him, Batgirl, gets um, shot through the spine by the Joker and paralysed and put in a wheelchair and ends up becoming Oracle. Now, just skipping to another storyline that was of major importance in the Batman's uh, era during the, uh, during the 90s was Nightfall. This was probably one of the biggest events in the Batman universe in that time. And this is his encounter with Bane, the first encounter with Bane. Uh, Bane basically beat him senseless and then finished him off just by lifting him above his head and breaking his back over his, over his knee. Didn't want to kill him, wanted to leave him broken and battered. Uh, did so, now there was no miracle one week later where someone, oh, you've just got a couple of discs out in your back, punch, punch, and you're sweet to go. Um, no, he was actually out of action for a year and um, Nightwing had to pick up the mantle and become... Uh, Batman in that interim, and you saw other characters like Azrael and stuff like that starting to pop up too. <coughs> then, after that, we've got the birth of the Tim Burton uh, movies. You know, so they're, they're seminal, like Jack Nicholson's turn as the Joker was absolutely fantastic, and a special honorary mention of that film because they actually had Bob Kane in the film. If you watch it in the scene where there's a police sketch artist that actually hands a, a sketch of the artist's interpretation of what the Batman looks like and hands it to the reporter and he looks at it and he goes, oh yeah, very funny. You'll actually notice it's got Bob Kane's signature and the bloke smiles and that's Bob Kane, the artist who created Batman. So keep your eye out for that one. Now, there was also many, many different um, iterations of them films uh, culminating in the lovely um, nipple suit uh, with George Clooney, um, Batman and Robin Forever and all these other good films that are quite forgettable and it sort of killed the Batman idea for a very long time in cinematic uh, until we got the more recent version back which people love the trilogy uh, the new tri the old well sorry now the older trilogy with the Justice League reboot and stuff and the new DC Universe reboot but Christian Bale as Batman in that um, really showed a new modern edge to it where they were trying to incorporate the comics a little bit more in the movie sense but still make it like in a real world setting. I think they did a good job until the last one, like uh, all I'll say is theatricality, deception. No, sorry man, that's just wrong. It's, it's crap. So anyone can defend that performance as much as they want but I'm not, it doesn't get anything from me. But I don't, I'm not here to flame anyone or do a Rick's rant, guys. That's his show. Um, so then we step into um, the Jim Lee Batman. Batman story, Hush. Another fantastic story. Um, these are the newer stories, so I don't want to get too much into them because if there's newer people out there that are enjoying the animation or TV shows or movies and that want to get back and read some of the newer comics and that which are digital and stuff like that that you can get, I don't want to spoil it for you. But really mind-blowing story. Um, the artwork by Jim Lee and that is absolutely fantastic. And then we leapfrog again, which is after Flashpoint, where we get the new 52 Batman, which is this one. Um, a lot of things remain the same, except 10 years has been removed from the history. Okay, so it's a younger version of Batman. A lot of things um, of seminal importance haven't really happened yet. For example, Batgirl's walking around. She's still Batgirl. She's not Oracle. Um, then there's Rebirth, okay, which, again, massive things reshaping that again. So pick up the comic books and get into that. Then we're going to get into the DC Universe reboot. Um, a lot of people don't like Ben Affleck. A lot of people were nervous about him taking on the Batman role. I've got to say, particularly after, you know, with, when you look at his previous track record with um, superhero movies doing Daredevil, which, let's be honest, I don't really blame on him, but the people who wrote the film wasn't a good written film. Um, like throwing Elektra in there in that sort of regard and stuff like that. Yeah, just rant for another day. Um, but yeah, his role as Batman, personally, I think the best Bruce Wayne that we've seen. Um, 
carries off that swagger and that arrogance of a rich billionaire playboy that really doesn't give a toss about anything really, really well. Um, and the fight scenes as Batman were absolutely fantastic. Particularly in the Just League. Now, there's been some flat cop saying, oh, Batman was virtually useless in this thing and stuff like that. Well, he goes up against Superman and he doesn't have Kryptonite and Superman kicks his ass. So, that's a given. Um, then the next time... When he's supposedly doing nothing, he's taking on like tens of thousands of parademons. So, I don't know what film they were watching. This guy's like, for a bloke who doesn't have superpowers, and as he says, his main superpower is a lot of cash, I'm rich. You know, so, yeah. Now, but I'm going to go into his powers and abilities. Even though he's a human, through skill and determination, this guy has trained under nearly every martial arts um, skill and discipline there is on the planet. He's, he's travelled to the far reaches of the earth. He's also trained with the League of Assassins and stuff like that. Um, gee, the, the mind on the guy, the tactical brilliance. And it's I, I think he's like got that Boy Scout motto, you know, hope for the best but always plan for the worst. Um, as evidenced in a Justice League story from the 90s called Tower of Babel where basically his ideas and plots to take down the entire Justice League get stolen by a criminal organisation and they use it to dismantle the league. And when they find out that it was all his plots and plans, let's say it doesn't go well for him. So that's another storyline to read. Um, graphic novel, by the way, really, really good. But really, that's all I can say about the character. Um, in the Justice League, he's pretty much the brains, uh, the master strategist. Give him, give him a couple of weeks and some plan, time to plan, and he can basically take down anyone. He's been ruthless to the core. Um, you've actually seen him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Darkseid. Now, not many mere mortals can actually say they've done that and talked down Darkseid, like put a threat to him and made Darkseid surrender. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, have a look at um, some of the Justice League animated films out there which are based off the comics, which are absolutely fantastic too. But listen, guys, that's me. I don't want to ramble too much. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you do, please like and subscribe. Um, feel free to check out my reviews on my channel and stuff like that as well. And if you've got any comments or questions, feel free to drop them below. Thanks, guys. This is me signing off for the Collectiverse, and I hope you enjoy collecting.